Hey guys, Superbro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the sinister world of Little Nightmares as we explore its creepiest aspects. From the haunting structure of the moor, an aquatic prison within which the game is set, to the terrifying monstrosities that amble through its halls, Little Nightmares is a game full of disturbing imagery and unsettling subject matter. In the original game, we follow the story of a gnome-like girl known as Six, while in the three DLC chapters, we play as a runaway boy. This video will cover all current Little Nightmares content, although obviously won't touch on the upcoming sequel because, well, it isn't out yet. So sit back, relax, and let's explore this strange game series as we take a look at Little Nightmares' creepiest moments and why. Throughout the moor, we find ourselves running into these creepy looking eye mechanisms. The theme of voyeurism runs throughout this game and its environments. But these eyes are the most blatant example. The eye machines are used to track children attempting to escape the facility and, if spotted by their gaze, have the ability to petrify their target, turning them to dust. One of the most unsettling moments early on in the game can be found if players discover this secret room. Here we get to see a view from inside one of these gigantic eye machines. It is used as a secret window to spy on a nursery full of sleeping children. Knowing where these children end up later in the game and their purpose on this ship only make this discovery all the more sinister. Leeches are freaky to begin with. They have few distinguishing features apart from their slimy bodies which elongate to ridiculous lengths and suction pads full of tiny teeth made for draining blood. So of course their appearance in Little Nightmares is pretty unnerving. However, it's our first encounter with these particular enemies that is without doubt one of the game's most intense moments. After falling through these rotten floorboards into the crawlspace below, Six is plunged into darkness. However, something is making a noise and upon illuminating her surroundings, Six realises she must move quickly to escape a nest full of these blood-sucking creepy crawlies. The janitor, also known as Roger, needs no introduction. It's pretty obvious why this terrifying resident of the moor has been given a place on this list. His skin has collapsed over his face, blinding him to his surroundings. Instead of using sight, the janitor has an acute sense of sound and picks up on the slightest noise. Then he proceeds to feel about for whatever may have made said noise with a pair of horrifically long and disproportionate arms. His legs are tiny, but who needs speed when you have this kind of reach? The janitor's job seems not only to be maintaining the machinery on board for more, but also watching over the children and delivering their bodies to the kitchen where they can be cooked up for its guests. More on that later. We encounter this terrifying monster at several points in the main game and its expansion, The Hideaway. Each and every encounter is tense as we must navigate silently past, sometimes mere inches from the janitor's position. A sequence where Six finds herself trapped inside a moving elevator with the janitor is particularly memorable, but it's the final fight that comes as the biggest heart-in-mouth moment. A room full of shoes, but why? Well, the further we get into Little Nightmare's story, the more apparent it becomes that many people won't be needing their shoes anymore, and it seems as though their belongings end up here in this dump, in the depths of the facility. 
but something is living beneath these discarded clothing garments. We never know exactly what, and that only makes this sequence all the more unsettling. Six must make her way across the sea of shoes before she is dragged down by the creature living beneath them. Climbing aboard old suitcases grants momentary safety, but the dump monster is always ready to resume its chase whenever we climb back down. Our movement speed is slowed, and that, combined with the fear of the unknown, make this sequence a genuinely scary one. One of the earliest sights we come across during our time in the moor is this one. An incredibly tall and thin body hanging by a noose, suspended from the ceiling above. We can't see the man's face, but we know exactly what has happened here. A letter is found on the floor beneath his swinging corpse. Although we can't read this letter, we can imagine what it may have said. It seems as though this man took his life after witnessing the slaughter of so many innocents. He could no longer live with himself after being involved in such barbaric practices. This simple yet chilling sight sticks out, as, unlike many of the game's fantasy elements, this one seems far more real and relatable. A disturbing image that will stick with you long after you have left this room. At several points during Six's story, she nearly collapses as her stomach makes some worrying sounds. It seems as though changes are taking place within her, and the only way to stop this pain is by consuming meat. However, once Six comes across something to eat, she returns to normality for a short amount of time, until the cycle repeats. As Six becomes more ravenous, the things she chows down on become more and more questionable, until finally, in a shocking turn of events, she chooses to eat a friendly gnome instead of the food it offers her. This elderly woman, known as the Granny, is highly dangerous and very creepy to behold. She has the appearance of a rotting corpse, with sparse hair and long, gangly limbs. Her flesh is wrinkled and tight to the bone. We don't get a good look at her in the game, as she spends most of her time beneath the flooded murky depths of the moor. She appears in the first chapter of the Little Nightmares DLC, an expansion where we assume the role of this runaway boy rather than Six herself. Of course there are several moments where we must brave the water in order to progress, and Granny is always close by to give us a scare. Much like the dump monster before her, we must pay close attention to movement on the water surface, such as rising bubbles, to tell if we are in danger. However, unlike the previous monster, this one can nudge floating debris over, so we're never really safe and must keep moving at all times. Maybe it's the natural fear of drowning, or perhaps being chased by the unknown. Whatever the reason, this horrifying resident of the moor is by far the creepiest of the bunch, but luckily one of the few who can be defeated. Little Nightmare's penultimate sequence shocked many with its grotesque imagery when it first released. A large number of hideously obese and monstrous looking guests board the moor to feast on food prepared by equally terrifying looking chefs. Some of this food we know is made from human remains. All this takes place under the watchful eye of the Lady, a masked woman of great power who seems to run the show here. While the sight of these hideous creatures shoveling food down their gullets is pretty scary by itself, things only get more anxiety inducing when they spot Six and quite literally fall over themselves to catch her. If they do, then we become their next snack. This chapter culminates in a sequence of pure terror as we are chased through the halls by a frenzy of ravenous guests, only escaping by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> 
Finally, we come to The Residence, a location found in both the final chapter of the base game and its DLC expansion, The Runaway. This manor-like environment is where aforementioned antagonist, The Lady, resides. The Residence contains many creepy elements from these sinister looking portraits which show just how twisted and inbred some of the family tree really is, to the ghostly spirits of fallen children who seem hell bent on consuming the runaway boy at every turn. The Residence is without doubt one of the spookiest locations we encounter during our time inside the moor. However, two particular events that take place within the residence really cement it within this list. The first sees Six defeating the lady and then chowing down on her dying body, sucking both the life and her infinite power from it. Six then uses its power to drain the life from the other guests aboard for more. It's a complete bloodbath. But before this happens, something even more disturbing has taken place, something we only discover after completing the main game and dipping into the Runaway DLC. You see, before the lady is defeated, she captures the runaway boy and transforms him into one of the little gnomes we come across throughout the game. We then discover that it was this gnome that Six feasted on, as shown earlier in this very video. So all along, the fate of our own character was to become the victim of our previous one. And just like Little Nightmares, we end this video on that dark note. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you are interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.